Welcome to Euro 2020, 20 questions edition with Footy Fellas, happening in 2021. I think the Euros are going to be uh, super exciting and it's gonna have crowds and that's gonna be awesome. What about, how would you sum that up in one word? In one word, uh, it's gonna be orgasmic. One word to describe my expectations, European. Unpredictable, lots of good teams, hard to see which will come out on top. Definitely Amsterdam with the Johan Cruyff Arena, legendary player and legendary city. I'm going with Baku, uh, Azerbaijan. Beautiful city with a mix of ancient and modern architecture. The coolest home city is Rome because it has the Colosseum and uh, history that um, I can think of. Croatia away dark jersey. The Croatian kits, the Croatian, both the home and away, it's just the checkerboard. It's the classic red and whites, and then the black, smaller checkers, super fresh, great combo. The coolest jersey is either the away Croatia kit or the home Italy kit. Both are class. 20 gyros, come on. Unless a gyro is less than a euro, which I doubt. So do the quick math. I'm guessing it's 20 gyros. I would take, well, I would take 20, at the moment I would take 20 gyros because I'm hungry and I can't really spend 20 gyros. 20 gyros, I'm a hungry boy. Uh, you gotta go group, group F, I mean group of death, 100%. Group F, the group of death. Group A, because anyone can win. It's anyone's, Italy's the favorite, but I could see any two teams coming out of that group. Italy, in my mind. Portugal, they've got a team that's young and hungry and talented and they can do some cool, cool things in the future. Most exciting team, it's gotta be Belgium. You have De Bruyne, obviously, the Hazard brothers and Courtois goal could be their last real shot with these players in their primes to do something magical. Most exciting player is always gonna be Mbappe. Mbappe. No doubt, most exciting player in the world right now, Kylian Mbappe. Ciao Felix on Portugal. For sure be Jesse Lingard because he seems very punny from the videos I've seen and my family would appreciate that. I would bring, I would bring Marcus Rashford because I think my mom would think he was really cool. N'Golo Conte, nicest player out there. best F1 driver um, would be, I think the best F1 driver would probably be Kevin De Bruyne. I think it would be really funny listening to him speaking on the radio with really brief, just Kevin's, Kevin's. Mbappe has a natural need for speed. Ferran Torres, city, Spanish player. First of all, his name kind of sounds like Ferrari, so lots of opportunities there. Second of all, he's six foot, which seems tall, but there are F1 drivers taller than six feet, and he's a finisher, and he's got pace. There's my, there's my F1 driver, that's who I want behind the wheel. Yep, Kevin, Kevin got you, Kevin. It's not weird because it feels like the right time for Spain to transition as a country, as a footballing nation into the next generation, which is why it feels normal and the right thing to do. It's odd, but it makes sense as the team has aged. It's a little, it's a little weird. It's a little weird, but when you look at the, when you look at Real Madrid's roster, I think you can, you can understand why there may not be any Real Madrid players on the team. Yes, but they won't. No. Croatia can, they, they could, but they won't because they aren't as good as they were and they're not, they're not, a, they're known quantity now. People will watch out for them. 
Benzema absolutely deserves to be starting for France. He is a top five striker in the world and uh, belongs in the best team in the world. No, but he will be great off the bench. He does deserve to be starting. Hell of a year for Real Madrid, and they've put the pass behind them. He's their best option up top alongside their other studs, obviously. Portugal right now, they look like they're, they, Portugal looks like they're like a, like a 7.9 to 8.2, but if they get cooking, they could, they could be comfortable in the nines. Very good. I'd say 9.2 out of 10. I think they're 10. I think this is their tournament to go back to back Euro champs and prove that they're the best. They're the only 10 out of 10 right now. Portugal, it's gotta be Portugal. Great matchup would give a slight edge to Portugal. France, viva la France. <laughs> Portugal versus France, obviously. Prob probably the France-Portugal game. England versus Scotland should be a barn burner. You've got that insane rivalry, that intense closeness in geography. Scotland just snuck into the tournament. England always has high expectations. Can Scotland even get a point? That would make for a great match. I would either move I would either move Portugal and France up to their own like bracket, their own level, because they're that good and that much better than the competition, or I would move Belgium down because I just don't think Belgium is what they were a couple years ago. I think I would swap Scotland and Russia. I'd move Scotland down one tier and Russia up one tier, given how good they've been in recent tournaments. And they finished above Scotland in the same qualifying group, nine points better than Scotland. So I definitely swap places there. I would move down Netherlands into the elite category. It's gotta be the Viking clap around the Iceland national team. So much popularity, so much excitement, whole country on their back with the clap. My favorite pass here a moment is without a doubt Mario Balotelli after he scores against Germany, takes his jersey off and just stands there and flexes. It's really cool. Iceland beating England and the Viking clap becoming a world renowned celebration. Keep calling the sport soccer. It would be overpriced both tickets and concession stand food, and then you'd miss the chanting. There wouldn't be enough chanting, enough excitement in the, in the crowd, which is what it's all about. We would ruin it by, well, we would improve, we would have a great performances, that's without a doubt. We would probably, it would probably be over commercialized. It wouldn't be the, it wouldn't be the Americas, it would be like the Budweiser Americas something. Biggest surprise team is Spain. I think they have a lot of talent and they have lower expectations, so they could make a sneak peek to the final. Turkey could turn some heads. Ukraine, a team you might not have thought about, might not have heard of, but they finished on top of their qualifying group that included Portugal, and they have midfielder Malinovsky from Atalanta in the Serie A, and he's super exciting. Watch out for Ukraine. France. Worried about Italy in that group A that could go anyone's way. They have an unproven midfield, aside from Verratti, could falter. Always, habitually, England. They just have like such a talented team and will still find a way to break your heart. I think it will be a team from group F, likely Portugal. Gonna go Portugal. It's gonna be Portugal, France in the finals, if that's possible, and Portugal will take it home. It's no question that it's coming home to France. Vive la France, vamos la France. No one says that, it's Spanish, I'll take that back. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments which team you think is taking home Euro 2020. Throw us a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next one. Any final words on Euro 2020? I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. Um, the world's ready. I'm ready. Let's have let's have a great summer. Uh, what's your sign? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm genuinely not sure. Is that should I be worried about that? <laughs>